The 1906 earthquake and fire leveled San Francisco in one of the worst natural disasters in American history. By its end, over 3,000 people had died, 80% of the city had been destroyed, and several hundred thousand people were homeless. The cause of the earthquake was a sudden movement along the San Andreas Fault, which has become notoriously linked to San Francisco. But did you know that the fault doesn't actually go through San Francisco? To find the San Andreas, you need to head to Daly City in the suburbs south of San Francisco, where you can see it up close. Here's a virtual field trip of the San Andreas Fault and its effects on San Francisco. What better place to see the San Andreas Fault than San Andreas Lake? I'm standing on the San Andreas Fault right now. Can you see it? Probably not. It's not as easy to tell uh, as in like the movies or something like that. Um, but what it is, is this kind of low point on the land that forms this valley. Uh, can you see how linear this valley is as it goes back right here? That's pretty unusual. And the reason why it's formed like this is that the San Andreas Fault cuts right down the low point of this valley and it's weakened the rocks right along the fault. And so they're more easily eroded and you get this low point that gets exploited by water creating this valley. And it also forms the delineation between two tectonic plates. So on this side of the screen, we got the Pacific Plate, and on this side, we got the North American Plate. And uh, they've been moving against each other for some time now, creating earthquakes like the 1906 San Francisco earthquake, which we're gonna talk about today. Now, the San Andreas Fault doesn't actually go through San Francisco, but let's go see where it gets closest. So once again, I'm standing on the San Andreas Fault, and this time it's a little easier to see because there is a giant landslide all around me here. And it wouldn't be here unless the San Andreas Fault had weakened this rock in this particular area, which was then eroded by the Pacific Ocean, creating a perfect condition for, uh, for a landslide to happen. You can see in this image the scarp of the landslide, the body, and eventually its toe where it meets the ocean. Their house is like right on top of the San Andreas Fault, right on top of a landslide. Bro, what are you doing? Get out of there. It's here that the San Andreas Fault bypasses San Francisco and extends into the sea, moving in a north-northwest direction. You can see that the landslide at Muscle Rock Park trends in the same direction of the fault as it heads into the Pacific Ocean. So over here is the North American Plate, over here is the Pacific Plate, and they've got totally different rocks between them. So behind me are rocks of the Merced Formation, which are really recent. They're from the Pleistocene, so less than two million years old. The other side of the fault on the Pacific Plate has greenstone of the Franciscan Complex, which is millions of years older. They wouldn't be next to each other if it weren't for the fault. This is the closest that the San Andreas Fault gets to San Francisco, but we'll see next where the epicenter was in relation to the city. as close to the epicenter of the 1906 earthquake that you can get without getting wet. At 5.12 a.m. on the morning of April 18th, 1906, a magnitude 7.9 earthquake happened about two miles west of here out in the Pacific Ocean, right along the San Andreas Fault. And when that happened, the Pacific Plate moved about 15 feet to the northwest of the North American Plate. And think about how hard it would be to move like a boulder 15 feet uh, all at once. And then multiply that by a tectonic plate that's like, you know, hundreds of miles across and many miles down. And think about all the energy it would take to move such a massive block of earth. And that is the energy that was released upon San Francisco. The magnitude 7.9 earthquake and its resulting fire leveled the city. There's almost nothing left of any structures from that time period. But there are some ruins, and we're gonna go now to see uh, some of the remains. If you're looking for the effects of the 1906 earthquake, one of the places you can visit is Sweeney Observatory. And there's almost nothing of it left. It used to be this 35 foot tall by 100 foot long, um, they call it observatory not like for stars, but just like a, a lookout point basically for people in the Victorian area. Um, I guess it was also like a makeout spot too, so your great great grandparents. Anyway, um, what you see here is the foundation in red, and it would have circled all the way around here. And this is pretty much the, uh, the most prominent thing that remains. 
Uh, the rest has been grown over and we can see it's turned in this kind of mound of rubble. It's straight up archeology span at this point. And this complete destruction of this building is attributable to the 1906 earthquake. So here's more of the foundation of the observatory. You can see here, it looks like people just kind of piled some stones together from the rubble. But you've got this whole huge block of it. it. looks like maybe an entryway, some sort of arch right there that's just fallen down the hill. Probably hasn't moved at all that much since 1906. So to recap, although the San Andreas Fault doesn't go through San Francisco, you can still stand right on top of it at San Andreas Lake or Muscle Rock Park. The epicenter of the 1906 earthquake was about two miles west of Ocean Beach, and although it's hard to find ruins from that time, there are still some on top of Strawberry Hill with the remains of Sweeney Observatory. Thanks for watching, and make sure to subscribe to Poopy Archaeology for more videos about the past.